Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Reto, and uh, today I'm going to introduce you to uh, TypeScript. To give you a little background, um, at the beginning of this year, I uh, was tasked at my company with uh, one of those huge rewrites of an old legacy application, state-of-the-art, single-page application, React. And uh, we are three people. One of uh, those people is a freelancer. And um, we knew that uh, we had to get things right, uh, because if we didn't, we would suffer for the next five years, because this big rewrite is the base for everything in the next five years. Um, so this freelancer colleague of mine, Philip Stuck, you, uh, maybe some of you uh, know him, uh, he, uh, he basically freshly came from uh, five months at Microsoft and was saying, yeah, let's do TypeScript, let's do TypeScript, it's awesome, it's awesome, we've been a big team, it's been a big help. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't. I like my JavaScript, I, I like React, I, we know what we're doing, we're writing unit tests, we do everything correctly, we have a great architecture. Um, and we, we, we started uh, developing our new app and, and of course when you want to make everything right you have to refactor a lot. You write unit tests and you change them again, you change them again, you change the architecture a little bit here and there and we realized it's a lot of work and at, at one point in time like he insisted on please let's try TypeScript, just take one day. So I took one day, I wrote the small little prototype in TypeScript and I was basically sold, and in the middle of this big rewrite that is now uh, four or five months in, we, comp we basically moved our whole JavaScript application to TypeScript in the middle of this rewrite. And it kind of worked out. We are basically almost done now, and uh, I would like to share the, the experiences uh, of that whole ordeal uh, uh, with you. So. First, I would like to give an introduction. What is TypeScript, actually? I don't know. How many here have heard of TypeScript? Jesus, yeah, very good. And everybody participates, too. I've been warned that people don't participate. That's awesome. Um, then I'm going to talk about why TypeScript has been such a win for us in practice. And then the third part is what you need to know if you would like to use TypeScript, too, because I kind of convinced you. Or for any other reasons. And at the end, we're going to do a q and I hope I, I'll, I'll be done in 30 minutes. Uh, and so we'll have enough time for the Q&A. So please, if you have any questions, remember them, ask them at the end. And um, if not, I will dive into our live code base and maybe do some freaky refactor stuff or whatever until the 45 minutes are up. So just so everybody has heard of TypeScript. So who here has ever who here has ever uh, written professionally in a statically typed language? Like real Java, C-sharp kind of things? All right, a couple of fans. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. All right. Good. So basically, TypeScript is made for application-scale JavaScript development. So this means that TypeScript is a language made for big JavaScript applications. So if you're just your progressive enhancement, kind of jQuery, copy-paste from Stack Overflow, this is not really adding anything. What you need to be doing is you need to be a team, and you need to, be, you need to build a big, let's say, single-page application in any kind of framework, and then the added benefit of, of TypeScript kind of starts to kick in. So keep this in mind when I, when I, when I continue with the talk. So TypeScript basically uh, is a superset of JavaScript. So this means that any JavaScript code you write is actually valid TypeScript. So you can copy paste your JavaScript into a TypeScript file, compile it, and it just runs. What then TypeScript does is it adds modules. This is kind of, I don't know, it's not really special uh, in 2015 because there's a bunch of solutions for that. It adds um, AS6 sugar, so double arrow functions, uh, string literals, classes, all those things, but you can get this elsewhere from Babel, Bubble, or whatever you spell that. Um, the real thing that TypeScript, in my opinion, adds is optional static types to JavaScript. Uh, please note optional static types. After this, then it compiles back to a readable JavaScript, and I really mean readable because uh, there's like CoffeeScript where you cannot read it afterwards after compilation. So just it's it's really nice. It compiles to readable JavaScript. 
And to kind you to kind to show you all this, how this works for those who have never seen it, I'm I'm gonna do something that is kind of dangerous. I'm gonna do a live coding session. Um, so I have prepared a little application, and this little application is a really basic mock application. What it does is it assumes that you have on your cell phone, you have a fitness app or whatever, and you track your jogging runs. And what this application does, it basically it gets from the API of this fitness app, it gets all the runs you have done, and it accumulates or it, it calculates the, the total duration of time you have been running. That's all it does, it's very simple. So, let me run you uh, quickly through the code. It's only roughly 30 lines. Um, so this main function here basically gets some HTTP, goes to some HTTP modules and gets the runs uh, synchronously, by the way, because it's just a mock. Um, it then takes the, uh, the runs and puts it into an add operations function to get the total duration, and then we log what total durations in seconds we have been running over the whole ordeal in our fitness app. Maybe quite quickly to HTTPS modules, this is just a very simple mock function. It returns an array of like run objects. They have some ID, they have a start timestamp, an end timestamp. And they also have a Boolean, whether it was an interval training. And uh, in this duration calculation, you do not want to take your interval training into your, into your account because you're kind of misleading on, on your on your time. And then in the in the demo, uh, in the actual main function, you basically have this simple add up duration function that takes the runs and it basically loops over all the runs. And if it's not an interval training, you calculate the duration between the start and the end using moment.js, line 7 uh, to 10, add it up, return a total, and that's it. That's the whole application. So as you see here, this is basically JavaScript, but uh, on the left-hand side, you know already that this is actually TypeScript. So I can run this, and uh, I pray to God that this works. I, compi I compile it, and it says total running time, uh, 15,300 seconds, whatever. So what I want to do now, what I want to show you in practice is let's basically dive into the superset and what this adds to you. So as, as, as a first uh, kind of um, uh, task, I would like to switch to the, to the uh, module system of TypeScript. So I go here and I say, I would like to import it here. And I also say I want to export the function. And I remove the common, uh, the common JS stuff on the bottom here. And that's it. So you have already gained a little, uh, uh, some things here. This editor, what it does is actually now, because it's a TypeScript module, a TypeScript uh, um, uh, editor, what it actually does now is it, it understands, okay, so this HTTP module has one function, get runs, and it also knows that if you try, if you make a mistake, and for example, say, get run, and this function doesn't exist, it will underline you and tell you, hold on a second, this doesn't work. So the ID, what the ID does here is it compiles a, a, a TypeScript, um, the, it uses the TypeScript compiler to, to compile this in the back. As you can see, if I try to run this now, it will break and it will tell me, hold on a second, there is on compile time a mistake. You, the function get run does not exist. So this is kind of nice, I guess. You cannot call some functions on a random module Without and then build the, the project successfully. That doesn't work in JavaScript. You would get a runtime error somehow, undefined, it's not a function or something like this. And we can take this even further by saying, okay, so let's tell the compiler a little bit more about our program that we write so he can check more stuff. So this run object here is implicitly defined by this uh, object literal here, or this array, array literal. And what we do is we say, okay, let's define the interface of this run. And say, okay, this interface is, it has an ID, which is a number. It has a start, which is a string. An end, which is a string. And an is interval training, which is a Boolean. We now then tell TypeScript, uh, well, this function here returns an array of runs. And this is really nice now because now TypeScript knows, okay, so runs, 
got to come out of this function. So if I do a mistake in the object that drew, perhaps I forget an ID. Uh, the ID here tells me, wait, you, you, this is not valid code. You say run come out of this function, but actually that's not true. There's something missing. We can take this then even further and say, OK, so that's nice. Uh, we would probably like to export this interface because we would like to reuse this in our demo TS and say, OK, so we kill this here because this doesn't make any sense. And we say this add operation, this takes also an array of run. And uh, now TypeScript knows that within the function, these runs is an array of run. So when I now uh, say uh, runs, it realizes, oh, this is an array. So it, the ID tells me here all the functions that you can put on an array. And even better, we for each over it, and TypeScript is even so. So TypeScript does a lot of uh, um, uh, type inference still. So it realizes, OK, so this for each here, this parameter here, this t, is actually of type HTTP run. So if I say now t and make a dot, it tells me, OK, I have these four properties, and ID is interval, training, and start. So if I make a mistake, for example, this happens to me, or used to happen all the time uh, when I was writing JavaScript, I don't remember the, the, the property correctly, and I say, OK, ID, or let's say a little bit more realistically, um, is interval run instead of is interval training. It will right away tell me, well, this is wrong. You cannot do this. This does not compile. There is a mistake. So when you do this over your app, and as you can see, we only had to add two type annotations, define one interface, to get a lot of type checking and, it, as, a, as a consequence, error checking. Uh, when you do this, you can do quite powerful things. So now TypeScript knows so much about your code that you can actually do uh, refactors, I, w I dare to say Java-like, where you can say, OK, so is interval training this, this is somehow inconsistent. We would like to rename this to is interval run. When I do this, TypeScript automatically renames everything. So it, it renamed the object literal. And when I go back to demo, you also note that this is interval run uh, property here is renamed as well. So the code will still work. So wh why would you do this? I mean, in a small application, somebody would say, well, s so what? I mean, you add, I mean, w w what does it help me? If you go into like application scale JavaScript development, you have like a hundred or a thousand times this code. You have tons of interfaces, 30, 40 API routes that return some object with properties on it that have business meaning. And it just will happen to you all the time that you will make mistakes, simple mistakes. You call a function that is not really the, here. You access a property that returns undefined. That kind of leads to a strange bug because you do some strange uh, Boolean operation on it or whatever. So basically, if you don't have static typing, you, you have to test this. Oops, I'm sorry. And. And this is quite your deal, especially if you write uh, 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 like a, a browser application, because all your rendering code needs to be tested to basically assert that there is not some stupid mistake somewhere that basically crashes the browser. And th the second issue is too, everything has to be remembered. Every type of your app has to be in your brain. And at least for me, it always exits my brain all the time. So it, it's kind of... You, you, it, it really helps you develop quickly and fast w without constantly spending time at the documentation, chasing down some object literal somewhere in the function that you haven't touched for six months and all that stuff. The IDE and the compiler give you a lot of information whether your code is actually correct and also help you remember things and properties. So you might say, well, this is verbose, and uh, there's some people that like take code verboseness very seriously. Ruby people, Python people, CoffeeScript people. Um, and this is kind of true. I mean, it gets more verbose when you have your HTTP 
method that somewhere queries an object from your server, you also have to define the interface. But, and this is something I think is very important, the verbosity is not just simply the lines of code that you have to look up. It's actually all the code you have to read and all the documentation you have to read to understand what this function is doing. And furthermore, all the tests you have to write and refactor. So if you make some module and you do everything, you write all the unit tests, you have 100% code uh, test coverage, you know everything, you go away, you come back three months later, you realize you need to refactor this. So you refactor it, you will have to change a hell of a lot of tests that are you know, browser tests that are somewhat hard to set up with fixtures and mocks and all those kinds of things. And you probably have to dive into the docs and chase down all kinds of functions that are used inside this module because, because you have forgot about them. So personally, I think if you look at the whole picture, TypeScript is kind of terse because you define stuff that really needs to be defined. So let me share the effects of TypeScript in practice on our project, because at the end of the day, this is what really matters. Uh, first of all, we were able to delete half of our unit tests. We were very keen on unit testing before because we do not want runtime errors in the browser. So we did stuff like this. Some component should kind of render without errors. Uh, this is, um, for some exceptions, not really needed anymore, so we could just delete a lot of our unit tests, which was a huge uh, uh, time save. Then when you have the type checker constantly helping you to avoid these small mistakes that basically make up a lot of time in our day, you're suddenly able to write huge amounts of code without running them. So as a, as a practical example, our React app has a custom Flux implementation, which I personally think that every big app should implement their own. Um, which is roughly 300 lines of code, and I was able to basically write this in one get go, and it, it, it just works. Of course, I made thousands of errors in the middle, but the compiler always told me, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you shouldn't access this, this function is not, is not valid, all those kinds of things. When you write TypeScript or when you write the module the first time, I guess it's not that much of a time save. I mean, of course, the ID tells you a lot of stuff you're doing wrong, but you have to define interfaces, you have to uh, define types uh, for every function. But when you are refactoring, when you go into code that you have written, like, say, three months ago, and you have to rename an object for consistency or the API changes or whatever, you're incredibly fast, which is, I guess, important for every project that has a long maintenance period. Uh, I had refactors of, of our core um, uh, objects where it took me maybe a day and I'm pretty sure that with JavaScript it would have taken me at least three or four days. I mean, it really depends a little bit on the case, but if it's simple renames and the renames, they basically litter all over your app, it's kind of hard to do with JavaScript because you have to fix a lot of unit tests and all that stuff. What's also a big benefit, and uh, well, this might not be good for or not everybody might like this, but I personally think that static typing really discourages implicit fancy patterns. And some JavaScript developers, uh, and I don't mean this in any negative way, they really like to do this. Uh, APIs in some JavaScript libraries are extremely overloaded. You can put the kitchen sink into one function, callbacks, optional properties that can be a string, and then uh, you see the funny stuff where a function uh, takes a string or an array, which is horrible because suddenly you uh, make an uh, index access on an array which returns uh, a, a, a single, um, a single uh, character, and if you make an index access on an array, it returns a whole type. So it's kind of... This is hard to do with typing, and I think in big projects where a lot of developers work together, this is really important that this stuff gets really contained. I have to say, though, you can still, if you want to, you can still do this in TypeScript because you basically can just say, okay, for this one line, I forget the typing completely. This can do anything it wants, and then you can step back into the typing when you've done your fancy pattern that can be of some use uh, for some use cases, I guess. So, things you should know when you want to use uh, TypeScript. Um, 
or if you want to try it. First of all, it works. We have done this. Uh, we have quite a large project. We, I have worked now with TypeScript eight hours a day or a little bit more for uh, two or three months. We have really ha have pushed the type system to the limit with with a typed uh, Flux implementation that is kind of tricky to do with generics and those kinds of things. So it really, I, c I can really say it works. It's also, it's quite mature and it's a really well thought out type system. I have to say, until this day, I'm quite amazed that it's, it's actually possible to put a type system on a language like JavaScript that is so nice despite undefined null, the type coercion, all the stuff, the weird stuff that JavaScript still does, that it's possible to do this. It's, in my opinion, quite an achievement. And there also I have, I'm not aware of any real quirks. We didn't run into bugs. The compiler always works as expected. There's really nothing much um, to say, bad to say about it. It is also used heavily in production. Uh, Microsoft, of course, uses it because uh, TypeScript uh, uh, comes from Microsoft. Um, th then there is uh, Angular 2 that is uh, now written in TypeScript. I think they abandoned their own type implementation at, at script or something. Um, and obviously, a lot of big banks that basically have Java people, they love this. They can make factories and interfaces and make everything crazy, so that's nice. Um, so it, it's not something like bleeding edge. This can be actually used and is used. And I think this is a very important point. Uh, you, you can basically rely on the JavaScript ecosystem. And I think this is a big difference compared to the older stuff where they try to make some Java thing that kind of compiles to um, uh, uh, JavaScript. And then they realized, oh, every dependency is a mess because the APIs don't work. So this is not the case. You can use all your favorite frameworks, I'm sorry, all your favorite frameworks, uh, moment.js, whatever you want, this works. And it actually works in a typed way. What you can do, and maybe if somebody sh should raise the question in the Q&A, so I'll show it, you can actually define like types for untyped, uh, um, um, for untyped libraries. And there is a huge Git repository with about roughly 1,000 uh, of those like type definitions for moment.js and everything, React, whatever you want. Uh, so you can actually work typed in, 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 in TypeScript using this library by just typing the exposed API and, and everything um, uh, in, that is not exposed is not typed because you can't access it anyway. You can also switch gradually. So this is basically what we did. I mean, I, we, we, we had the ongoing uh, JavaScript development project and we said, okay, so let's first change all our line endings. Um, we were using JSX, so that was kind of a bummer. Uh, uh, we had to do some stuff there. But if you have a straightforward JavaScript project, you basically can just rename your files from JS to DS, and you're up and running, and you can gradually add types more and more and more. And at one point in time, you put a linter in there somewhere that says, OK, and so now tell me what types are still undefined, and then, and then you're up and running. So you can switch gradually. This is actually possible. The development tooling is, in my opinion, awesome. I have, uh, I guess, except for in the Java world, I have not seen anything this polished. So Microsoft recently released a free version of uh, Visual Studio Code. So this is cross-platform. Uh, um, it's free. And uh, in my opinion, it's straight up awesome for TypeScript development. I think it's even quite awesome for JavaScript development, although I wouldn't uh, give up Sublime for it. But just to give you a hint on how awesome it is, my colleague, Philipp Stucki, he is a long-term Vim user, like for five years, 10 years, whatever. He switched from Win to Visual Studio Code. And I, I, if, if somebody from Vim, if you can switch him, then this is somewhat of a quality statement, at least in my opinion, because those guys are stubborn. <laughs> There's also there's plugins for the major build tools. Uh, we use Webpack. Uh, this works kind of seamlessly with the um, with the how can I say it the, the source uh, the, the source files and all those things. There is also obviously something for Browserify, so you can do this. There is a linter. There is something called TSLint where you can lint uh, over your code base. Uh, for example, what we like to do is we actually require ourselves to annotate even more types that is actually necessary for clarity. Um, so you have something that is 
JS hint, uh, ESLint, or whatever, ask uh, on, on kind of the same uh, uh, niveau there. You cannot use JSX and other language extensions, although I, I cannot think of any other language extension at JSX at the moment, but uh, um, for the React people, this is kind of, yeah, well, I mean, some like it, some don't. I'm kind of neutral on it, but uh, you just have to know that you cannot, you, you have to stay really in the regular JavaScript realm if you want to use um, a, a TypeScript, which I think is actually a nice feature for a big project. Not so much for a throwaway project, I guess. But there is somewhat of a small community. I think TypeScript is really not cool. I, I, I cannot think of anything else. That, I mean, on GitHub, the repositories are not there, pretty much. It's also not been talked about it this much. I mean, if you go on uh, um, uh, Hacker News or whatever, there is all kinds of hype, but not this hype, um, which I don't understand, but anyway. <laughs> Which the Windows window, but I don't understand why this is either because, uh, well, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> but uh, it's 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 not Windows only. It's over all platforms equally. It's open source. It's I know it's Microsoft, but I mean Apple is evil too. I don't know. It's just <laughs> the one thing that uh, well, I guess. What can I say? I mean, as a developer, you need to be willing to warm up to static typing. So if you're a team leader and you care about your profit margins, I highly suggest you switch to TypeScript. Although it might be that one or two devs on your team, they might not really like this because they cannot do the fancy stuff anymore. They say, I'm not a Java developer. I don't want to define interfaces, all those things. Um, and also, I have to say, I guess if you have written in a typed language before, you will be able to get this in one or two weeks easily. I mean, the type system is not as complex as some C++ macro stuff or whatever, so you'll be able to get it. And if you have never done it, it might take you a little bit longer to actually you know, get productive again because oh, what's the type of this? Generic here, constructor, how do I do this and all that stuff. But nevertheless, first of all, it's a, it's a very good lesson for programming because you have this information in your brain. You have to type information in your brain. You just need to write it down. And it's a good exercise to write stuff down that is simply in your brain because it will make the understanding clearer. So, but this is, of course, a drawback if you want to switch to a TypeScript. Then uh, 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 a quick mention of Facebook flow. There is a second type checker that surfaced from Facebook. Um, which was open sourced, I think, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's not really a compiler, it's just a type checker. They use the same type annotations, so they obviously realized it's the it's it, non-type JavaScript is kind of a problem for big projects. Uh, it's just, I, I mean, they do some cool things. For example, they do null checks. So the biggest drawback of TypeScript is that, it, that every type is nullable. Um, and if you ask some Haskell dude or whatever, he will tell you that this is basically evil, that you even have a null type in your application. Um, so Flow kind of uh, tries to catch this, uh, uh, and, and this to me sounds very cool, that it actually checks, do you do a null check before you access a property, all those kinds of things. In my opinion, there, I would love to try it. They simply, they don't have a version for Windows because it's written in OCaml, and uh, it's also, they say themselves, it's not really there yet. But this is something to keep in mind. I think it's even closer to JavaScript than TypeScript, in a sense. And <laughs> it allows for JSX, of course. So as a summary, um, I would say that I'm quite uh, hyped about TypeScript. And I would make the statement that if I were to join a new team, and they would tell me, Reto, you can choose one part of the technology stack and then shut up forever. I would immediately say TypeScript and then shut up forever. So I would do Angular, React, whatever, but I think TypeScript for big teams, it's just, in productivity terms, it's, 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 it has been a huge win for us. Um, so quickly about me, I, yeah, I'm Reto, I work uh, at, um, at Parking Cart uh, AG. And uh, I have a blog about React Flux stuff, codeexperience.com. You can hit me up on Twitter. So if you would like to have more information about TypeScript, you can either ask a question right afterwards, 
or then uh, you can contact me, uh, also my developer friend Philip, he is an expert in TypeScript. I'm not sure if you find anybody that is in Switzerland that quickly, that is available for consulting that has more under his belt. So um, if you want his, um, his, uh, his contact information, contact me basically. And yeah, that's it. So uh, we, I think I would open for questions. If there are no questions, then I would actually fire up uh, my Visual Studio Code again and go into the live code base and do some crazy things that you won't be able to follow maybe or whatever, but so yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. It's hot. So you you said that TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. That yes. Means more like ES5 because the module syntax you showed is clearly incompatible with ES6, right? Uh, yes. Well, that's true. That's a good question. I think it's actually ES3 or ES5. The the newest TypeScript compiler, and I actually was close to doing this, uh, actually supports the new ES7 import statement, so they are compliant with this. So they, they try to catch up with this, and I think this is a very good idea. I think uh, um, in the newest beta version of TypeScript, you can use the ES6-7-ish import statement, um, which I think should relieve uh, the mo the, the now the custom TypeScript import statement. Yeah, that would be my next question. How do they handle the upgrade path? If you, I mean, if you have a big application and the import syntax changes, maybe you can do some search and replace, but that'd be hard, right? Yeah, well, I think I think they will keep. I mean, I mean, this is an issue that you have not only with TypeScript yeah, but sure. with Java. Uh, I think they will keep the the old uh, the import um, statement I showed. They will keep this around for legacy reasons right. forever, I guess. I mean, they have to. I'm. I highly doubt that they will. Uh, some internal Microsoft big ass JavaScript application will regex and replace yeah, it. I sure. cannot imagine. So they will have to support. I mean. It's kind of nice. They're a big company, so they have the same concerns that big companies have, which are uncool. But I guess it's an important question. I think they they keep this. You can also actually compile down to ES3. So you can tell the TypeScript compiler, please compile to ES3 for Internet Explorer 8, 7, 6, hell. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll turn on the round mode. And uh, first of all, the IntelliJ editor can do it the same thing you showed, like highlight things and like this is not a property or this is not the actual function name without types, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, like type, this type system is modeled after C sharp and Java, so it's not sound. You can still write things that will be typed correctly and will not run and the compiler will not pretend. Third thing is it will not save you if you have like a interns or shitty code. They will just make a, I don't know, visitor pattern instead of returning one's object or array or whatever. They will do basically the same thing. It's just they will use more classes. Well, for the first question, for the first part of the question, I can say that uh, my third colleague, he uses the IntelliJ thingy mm -hmm. and the IntelliJ thingy also helps with, uh, can also do TypeScript. The IntelliJ thingy auto completion for JavaScript, it's nowhere near as good as what you get with a statically typed, like w with really with TypeScript. And I, I saw that he was like, okay, so, because he was trying to convince me to use this IntelliJ thingy and he said, yeah, you can rename and uh, show me and then it broke and all those kinds of things. So, <laughs> but with TypeScript, I, I mean, I agree this is possible, but with TypeScript, uh, I think it's better and it also, I mean, the auto completion is one thing, but the type checking is the other thing. Like that, the compiler tells you this inside of this if statement that gets only run when the user clicks this, 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 and that, and that is wrong. This is the, this is the main benefit. It's, I mean, the auto completion is nice and everything, but it's the type checker that tells you this is wrong. You cannot build because you will build otherwise. And I think everybody here has done it. You will build code that generates runtime error. You you will do that, and you do every day, I guess, in JavaScript. But you can still do it, obviously, in TypeScript. Uh, to say that the type system is like Java, I, well, I think, 
I'm not really sure how much it matters. I mean, it's just interfaces and function uh, um, signatures, and that's it. I mean, it's. I don't see how it's not JavaScript, and of course, you can try to mess with the compiler. You can do this, but you can just you can always say, okay, line. I, 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 I might be able to show this real quick. You can simply say, I cast this thing here as any, and you can do whatever you want. I mean, what just because you want to do something that um, let me let me show you this here. You can simply do this, and afterwards you can with the start you can do whatever. I mean, just because you want to write some lines that do not are not consistent with the TypeScript compiler, you, you just say, okay, so from here to here, I I simply write JavaScript. I, I I don't see how this is really bad, and I also don't see how it's really bad to say the type system is like C sharp because I think C sharp is a somewhat decent language, at least from the syntax point of view. I I, I, it's, I guess, but I mean, I can see that I can see that there are reservations for a type system. But I mean, any type system. But yeah, go ahead. Continue with the run, because I just remember if your kid uh, runs unchunked all the type system, this type system will not do much, and everything will be very much. And this you cannot compose very well. Uh, I mean, can you? Can you? Can you repeat? Uh, yeah, you, you said, as far as I understood, you said, if I want to write functional code, I cannot type it. Is that what you're saying? In, in, I mean, not give you much compared to what? Because JavaScript gives you nothing. But, but not much is better than nothing, right? I mean, I'm just, of course, it's, it's not Haskell. Yeah, next question, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, thanks for the great talk. Um, I wonder if you uh, experienced any problems with um, versions of type definitions, so that you're <laughs> pulling a definition. Okay. And yeah. And how do you deal with this? Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I should have mentioned it. Uh, this is one issue I have, and I had a sl I had a, 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 a bulletin there that where I said pro actually providing a dependency is troublesome. So just to, that the other people understand, there is these two comments here up above: uh, reference path moment JS. This basically is one of those type files that types me moment. So if I type here moment, it will, oh, I should maybe make it correctly here, moment dot. So it, it basically gives me all the methods. The problem is that these references, they are not as sophisticated as, say, node versions. So if you try to pull in a dependency that gets, that has a slightly different version um, than, than you are using, you, the compiler will say, well, you have here a mix-up of type definitions. I, I, I have to say this is somewhat of a problem that we, I mean, th th what we actually do is we have a global repo uh, where all our JavaScript lives in, and we have a global typing file that we handle ourselves. Because there is also some issues sometimes with the, with the require. I th you basically hit the biggest weak point, in my opinion, at the moment. Because these references, they should be versioned correctly like any other node module. Uh, the biggest problem I experienced is with the, with the global dollar sign, for example. So if you require uh, uh, Angular TypeScript definition, yes. it requires the latest jQuery, yes. which has the global dollar sign. Yes. And if you then want Protractor, it also has the global dollar and it cannot compile anymore. Yes. But it's very, I mean, you have to fork and then you have to remove the dollar sign. So it's very, it's a nasty workaround. Well, well hold on a second. So you have a dollar sign in a dependency. Or is, is that what you mean? As a, as a definition, as a global, as, uh, as a global uh, type. I, I think, I mean, the solution, what we do is we do not require any foreign TypeScript dependencies, but I, what they usually do is they make a JavaScript build and provide the type, the typing file separately, and we might we might change them a little bit. I mean, I agree. This, uh, I, 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 it's it's a very valid point. So people need to be uh, um, aware of this. It, in my opinion, it easily beats the. I mean, the productivity you gain in, in, in regular development is, is, is far outweighing this. But especially if you make open source software, this might be a problem for you. I mean, I'm not sure if TypeScript is that well for you know an open source module. It's, I guess you have to compile to JavaScript and just put it on NPM. I don't see any other way. Yeah, next question. Uh, hi, thank you for bringing this interesting topic. I would like to ask, like I see you there, use, you are there using like the external modules 
external TypeScript modules, so like they are compiled like with the common JS then, so that's like a Node environment. Have you also like experience with internal TypeScript modules, like just like big TypeScript project with the I have not done that yet. No, I we have we do not do this because I think Webpack cannot handle it. Okay, so you are always using it with the Webpack. We are using it through Webpack to get the hot reload cool thing stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I'm not I think it I think the the, the I don't really see the need for the internal module thing. I, I, we have not tried. We basically tried to stick to how CommonJS does it, basically. with the And we would like to replace our import statement with the ES7 import statement or ES6 okay. or whatever import statement that was mentioned, just for consistency. Thank reason. you. And one more thing, like you said, like you also, like in your company, like you converted like the JavaScript code base into the TypeScript code base. Yes. And like, what was the first step you chose? And so, like you imported like like you took the JavaScript code and put it into the TypeScript files and just like change the import statements or like um, well first what we did is um, it was kind of a mess for us because of JSX um, first we basically migrated file by file everything that was simple JavaScript in other words not a React component this was easy you just changed the, the from JS to TS and uh, Webpack will do for you what it needs to do. It will run the compiler and everything works. Then uh, the next step, what we did is basically we transpiled the JSX to regular JavaScript and then made this into TypeScript as well. Once we, ha once we had that, uh, we, we, we enabled the, an option in the compiler that it's not allowed anymore to have implicit um, any type definition which means that basically you can do whatever you want with the variable. So we basically annotated everything is any at the moment, and then we just started gradually typing. And at the very end, we switched from the React Create Element uh, hack uh, syntax to uh, ES6 classes at the very end to get the components typed as well, which is a huge deal in daily production. You have a ton of components, and if they're typed, then this is really cool. Next question. Uh, do you now type everything, or how do you decide which functions or variables to? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, we're kind of Nazis and type everything. Um, I, I think you, I, I personally think, first of all, if somebody in the code review, if somebody tries to do something that the TypeScript compiler does not allow, the other person usually calls bullshit on it and says this needs to be simple because it's a hell of a lot implicit if you try to do this. We type every variable. There is no any that in our code. And also we have the linter where it says function inputs and outputs need to be always annotated even if the TypeScript compiler is smart enough to actually infer the variable. So we go quite far. I'm, I, I, I think it's completely viable to not go that far, but we are kind of... Yeah. Another question? Yeah, here, behind. Where is here? Behind. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, maybe it's more a note than a question, because I, I saw you talking more about the concept of using full-blown TypeScript and then degrade where it's not possible to use TypeScript. Uh, but I think from what you just said right now, it's also important to see that with TypeScript, you can write pure ES6 and enhance where you want with some types, optional optional types. So that's also a completely valid approach, right? You don't need to write full-blown TypeScript. You can just use type annotations where you want to. Yeah, I, I, of course you can. I just think it's a bad idea because it will end up in using no types at all. I think if you say, okay, we go into the typing world, it, it is my personal opinion, of course, it's completely valid to do this, but to figure out the system and rules where to type and where not to type, it just strikes me as very hard in a team uh, and uh, the sloppy people, then they never type. And you go into code view, this needs to be typed. Okay, here you can leave it. Uh, just to prevent these discussions, basically, we say, okay, we type everything, and uh, you, you just got to type everything. But I, I see your point. I, yeah, I guess. For, uh, the thing is, I, I really have a problem with their approach because, I mean, the JavaScript, I think it was in 1.3.5, uh, where they um, wanted to get static types into JavaScript. So they made a recommendation. And it was 
not accepted at all by the community, so they needed to drop it again. Yeah. And I just think that if we really rely on something that was dropped and the community is not agreeing, yeah, but I mean, that's something about us, but what about the people who design JavaScript, right? I mean, if they don't come to, to a conclusion, even a vague concept, how they want to implement types, and we are implementing complete applications using TypeScript types, then probably it's better to only use it a little bit than full-blown. I, I guess I, I see the point. I think you may, I, I think Crockford was the guy who said basically, yeah, this whole TypeScript thing it doesn't give him anything. So I, I, I see your point. Although I would like to give as a counter argument, all the big companies, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, they are realizing that huge code bases that are not typed in large teams, it's just a huge productivity problem. And this will not go away. So Facebook came up with their own stuff. Google had this app script thing, I think, then Microsoft the TypeScript. So everybody's coming up. We need types. I mean, Facebook built a typed PHP or some crazy thing like this. So I guess whether Crockford likes it or not, the types are going to stay as long as we have big projects, I, I guess. I, okay, uh, one last just, question because um, we need coffee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, uh, I have mine, my, so my I, question, I don't care. <laughs> My question that picks up on, on his is that, uh, is, did you notice, maybe, I don't know how React is structured because I don't know React, in terms of OOP or, or functional programming, but did you notice that you were thinking differently about your application because of the typing yeah. effort in terms of how you really think about the, the app? Can I still functional answer the question? To or? Yeah, yeah I, I, well, this is, I think this is a good question. What I'd like to say first to this is that I think it for sure made me to make, to think clearer about my application because you have to think what's the type actually. But in terms of functional or object oriented programming, I, we don't, I mean, we have a lot of functional parts in it, but we also have classes in it. We try, I mean, we, I, I kind of use the pattern that this good for the solution. I, we are not at all dogmatic about that, I think. But you can, I mean, you can write functional code in TypeScript. It's completely possible and easily doable. Um, you, you just make function um, uh, signatures instead of classes and with the interfaces you, you can type object. I, I don't think that, I mean, of course there's classes, but now in ES6 there's classes as well. So you, you can do functional programming with TypeScript. You just also have to think about the types, which in some functional patterns is hard until you like click in your brain. <laughs> I, think it's more, I think it's more of the, if you try to write functional code and you cannot type it, maybe it's not the type system that is your problem, but maybe you simply, the type system in your brain is the problem. At least that's, when I, at least this happened to me once or twice when I was like, oh, I have this functional pattern, so what, what, what do I? And then, I, you know, after talks with some colleague, then I realized, oh yeah, it, it's easy. It, you just it, it didn't get it. So yeah, that's that's it. So we're gonna have coffee. So yeah. yeah. Uh, so apparently this is something that everyone wants to talk about more. But we'll have coffee. Uh, he convinced me, so I'm gonna try it anyway. <laughs> so that's that. Thanks.